Autistic people are stereotyped as being very analytical and data-driven, but is there actually any scientific truth to this? Do autistic people really, uniquely, make more deliberate decisions and rely less on intuition? Today we're looking at the scientific research that answers this exact question, as well as talking about what it would mean if this were true, and how it could explain the unique strengths and challenges that we know are associated with autism. As a psychologist, one of the common experiences that many of my autistic clients report to me is that when it comes to decision making, they often spend a long time carefully analyzing options and organizing their thoughts before finally locking in a choice. And they frequently express both confusion at how fast other people seem to make decisions, as well as frustration at the fact that other people don't seem to engage in this deliberate decision-making process. Or at the very least it seems to them and it makes them feel frustrated that other people can't seem to explain the reasons for why they've made the decisions that they've made. So these anecdotes from my clients seem to line up with the stereotype of autistic people being very analytical decision makers. But to examine this scientifically, let's look at some really interesting research that tested the decision making styles of neurotypical versus autistic people. To lay the groundwork, in 2011, a researcher and author, Daniel Kahneman, released what is now an incredibly famous book called Thinking Fast and Slow. This book talked about the two different types of thinking that we as humans can engage in. The type one, which is fast, automatic, low effort, and intuitive. And type two, which is slow, logical, effortful, and deliberative. And quick aside, but Jesus Christ, when I was playing poker professionally, this book was incredibly popular. Because at that time, in the poker community, there were two big groups of players. Players who called themselves intuitive and feels-based players, and players who were more like chess players. They were more calculated, more analytical, more mathematical. Um, and the contents of this book, this war between intuition and deliberative decision-making, fit really well into here. But back to the main point of the video. The assumption is, is that all people have access to both types of thinking. And by default, people will almost always approach making a decision using type 1, the fast and intuitive style of thinking, because it's low energy. And only in situations where people are very unfamiliar with a problem, or where they force themselves to pause and spend more time and energy on a problem, will they then deliberately engage type 2, the slow and deliberative style of thinking. But when it comes to autistic people, maybe what is the default for the general population, the use of type 1 intuitive thinking, is actually the opposite for them. Early research on decision-making for people on the autism spectrum found three key areas where they struggled to make decisions. Number one were decision-making situations where they had to talk to other people. Number two was when it came to making decisions that involved changing their routines. And number three were decisions that had to be made within a short time frame. While it was completely expected that talking to other people and changing routines would be difficult areas for decision making, since these are just core challenges related to autism, the difficulties with quick decision making was a much more unique finding. And this finding led to a hypothesis. If most people had access to both intuitive and deliberative decision making, but tended to mostly use intuition, what if autistic people relied much more heavily on deliberative, logical decision making and had a greatly reduced tendency of using intuitive rapid thinking? If this hypothesis were true, it could help explain many of the challenges associated with autism, particularly the verbal and nonverbal social difficulties. Because as one research paper put it, when it comes to socializing, rapid information processing is required to appear socially fluent. You don't have time in a social setting to sit there and deliberate and analyze all the data, all the micro expressions, all the tonal inflections, all the body movements. If you tried, you either wouldn't be able to keep up with the regular speed of a conversation, certainly not in groups, or at the very least, in order to keep up accurately, your brain would have to be firing at an incredibly high level the entire time, burning a ton of energy, which would just result in feeling drained and overwhelmed and burned out every time you socialize. This hypothesis about decision-making preference could also explain the strong desire for routine and sameness in autism. Because if autistic minds needed to constantly deliberate over large amounts of information to make decisions, if less things were changing, there would be less new information to need to be processed because it would already be accounted for and therefore their decision making 
and their life would be easier, which would make their overall stress levels just a lot lower. All right, that's a neat hypothesis. But what does the actual scientific research say? In this 2016 experiment, researchers conducted two separate tests to examine the relationship between decision making and autism. But just before we explore the experiments, let's mention their limitations so that you can understand the degree of skepticism with which to view these results. Like many studies, all of the participants were either attending or intending to attend university, which makes them not a super representative sample for the entire autistic population. Additionally, there was just a lack of demographic details for the participants. Um, things like socioeconomic status were not included, and this just limits the generalizability of the data and the findings. And while the sample sizes weren't tiny, there were over 90 participants in the first test and over 30 in the second. Obviously, larger sample sizes would be very nice. So in the first test, researchers focused on a group of people who weren't diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, but who had a range of autistic characteristics. Some people having a lot, some people having very few. And what they wanted to test was if people who had more autistic characteristics, would they also be more deliberative and less intuitive decision makers? So they recruited 95 research participants who completed questionnaires and these questionnaires measured their level of autistic characteristics and it also measured the person's preferences for decision making, whether they preferred using intuitive or deliberative decision making in different contexts. The results revealed that participants with a higher level of autistic characteristics had a significant preference for high deliberation and low intuition. And the opposite was also true. With the people who had very few amounts of autistic traits, they were much more intuitive and much less deliberate decision makers. But none of these participants were formally diagnosed with autism, and this research only compared levels of autistic characteristics with decision making preference. It didn't test decision making itself, and it wasn't done on people who were actually diagnosed with autism. But that's where the second experiment comes in. In the second experiment, researchers directly compared decision making styles in people diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder with decision making in neurotypical individuals. This time they used a questionnaire that measured preference for decision making, just like in the first test, but this time they added a behavioral task that objectively measured whether people were making intuitive or deliberate decisions. The task used to measure deliberate versus intuitive decision making is actually really, really cool. And it's called the cognitive reflection task. And what this task requires participants to do is they have to answer three questions that have been designed to elicit an intuitive response, which would actually be incorrect. Or if the participant paused and engaged deliberative decision making, they would actually get the correct answer. For example, participants were asked, a bat and a ball cost a dollar and 10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? The rapid intuitive response is 10 cents, which is wrong. Whereas the deliberative answer that would be correct but requires pausing to think would be that the ball costs 5 cents. The results of experiment number two showed two separate things. The first was that in the self-report questionnaire asking about what type of decision-making do people prefer, intuitive or deliberative, people in the autistic group showed a significant preference for more deliberative and less intuitive decision-making. The second finding was that based on the behavioral task, those who were diagnosed with autism were much more likely to answer it correctly, meaning that the autistic group did in fact use more deliberative and analytical decision-making, while the neurotypical group used much more intuitive decision making which arrived at more incorrect answers. So results from both of the experiments showed that people diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and people who were not diagnosed with autism but who had a high amount of autistic traits, both of these groups showed a consistent pattern of preferring to use and actually using more slow, deliberative type two decision making. And they showed a consistent preference away from using intuitive type one decision making. This preference for deliberative decision making is the opposite of what is found in the general population. And it might stem from a dominance and a unique strength of the autistic mind in engaging in deliberative analytical thinking. Or it could be because of a unique weakness or impairment with intuitive processes. Or it honestly just could be a combination of both. While the cause isn't certain, the findings do suggest that autistic individuals are likely to perform much better on tasks that require deliberation and logical consistency. Things like mathematics. And this also implies that they may struggle in contexts where rapid intuitive processes is advantageous, such as social situations. And really importantly, one other thing that's related to autism is trauma and PTSD. That video is on my channel, check it out. Thanks for watching.
拜。